Thank you, Stephen. And <clears throat> I'm honored uh, to have the opportunity to um, speak to you here at the World Policy Conference. And I think it's, it's a really timely topic. Many of you might have on the way um, over to uh, Marrakesh picked up um, the latest issue of The Economist. And their cover story um, actually asks, is social media undermining democracy? And this is um, really remarkable how our discourse, um, our discussion about the internet has really changed in the past years. Um, I want to start um, with a quote um, from Hillary Clinton um, when she was still um, US Secretary of State. And she said, the internet has become um, the public space of the 21st century, the world's town square, classroom, marketplace, coffee house, and nightclub. We all shape and are shaped um, by what happens there, all two billion of us and counting. She said that in May 2011 and really captured a very optimistic mood about the internet at that time. It was a place where people could, uh, or the place was seen as a place where people can globally connect, um, where they can share ideas, and where they can actually shape the world um, for better. And now fast forward to the end of 2016, and Hillary Clinton coming um, um, from an upset uh, defeat in the US presidential election. And she um, calls, you know, the internet has become for her a space where there's a fake news epidemic um, with real world consequences. And for, for her, of course, the real world consequences mean that she's not president. Um, she lost the, the presidential um, election. But the fake news discussion is not just about the United States. And, and the consequences are real, and they can be seen um, around the globe. And so I think it's a, it's a really good uh, topic um, for World Policy Conference. You know, we had uh, um, Brexit, of course. And in the um, course of the Brexit campaign, lots of fake news like this one um, were shared uh, and uh, spread. Um, we have uh, uh, the, the latest um, stories. The New York Times covered this. This is from The Guardian, um, mentioning that in Myanmar, fake images and also fake news are used um, to instigate um, um, violence uh, against the Rohingya um, Muslim minority. Then also a topic we, uh, we talked about this morning um, at the conference, um, the, the independence vote in Catalonia. And also in the context of um, um, the Catalonian discussion, um, there was lots of spread of, of fake news, a lot of um, fake news, for example, about um, fake incidents of um, police brutality. I mean, there was some, um, some incidents with the police, but also lots of made up stories um, that were shared um, widely um, on the internet. So, um, oops, not, so uh, we, we have heard the term a lot. I think it's, it's, it's important um, uh, to take a moment and, and reflect what this term actually means, fake news. Because um, we have found, uh, when, when, when we looked further into it, that the term is widely used. And on the left, um, you see um, fake news has become a political term. It's, it's been used by, by most, most prominently probably by President Trump to discredit um, the mainstream media and calling that media fake news. Um, often we make up news in terms as, as forms of satire. I mean, we, we're not con that concerned about that. In the middle, you see that fake news can just be, result from poor journalism. Journalists make mistakes. Media organizations make mistakes. Editors make mistakes. Um, that can uh, result in fake news. But usually, they get um, quickly corrected. But what we're really concerned is more on the, on the right side, what, what is um, underlined in red, which is um, intentionally um, um, intentionally spread false information, usually um, a story that's taken out of context, that's intentionally misinterpreted um, to give it an, a, a different spin and to drive an agenda. And that's really when you look at all these cases that I've cited, if you look at the US presidential campaign, if you look at the Brexit campaign, if you look at Catalonia, you'll actually find that spreading fake news are not just incidents on the internet. They're usually part of campaigns um, their strategy for political mobilization um, in all of these cases. And I would argue here that we should understand really the problem of fake news as they are being used as a strategy um, for political mobilization. And uh, you can uh, rightly ask, and we should rightly ask ourselves, what's actually new about this? What's actually new about fake news? And here's an example from medieval Europe, 
spreading fake news. Um, this is uh, uh, fake news about uh, Jews killing Christian babies um, and uh, blood libel. And this is an image that depicts that, that was used to incite, uh, incite violence and pogroms against Jewish people. So fake news uh, uh, have been around um, throughout history. So what's really new about them? And this brings us, um, of course, to what we have been talking about here at the, at the panel today, the internet revolution, the digital revolution, the spread of the internet, and the spread of social media have given all of us here the ability to produce news and to share them, to distribute them, two functions that used to be held by um, radio, television, print, that used to be the traditional gatekeepers of how news and information um, is um, created and distributed, uh, distributed. And these media organizations have lost this central gatekeeping fun function. Now everyone who is connected to the internet, um, who has the ability to use Facebook, who has a smartphone to take pictures, can create stories and can share them um, on the internet and can also distribute news stories to um, friends and networks. That's what, uh, what's really new. And at the same time, we see that the established media is um, in a crisis, not only in a crisis of revenue, as, as Stephen earlier mentioned, with, with declining revenue, but also um, that there's a lot of distrust uh, in um, established news media around the world. Um, we can see that um, it's not the same everywhere. Um, so uh, some countries, there's still much more trust in news media. In Germany, I will show you this is another slide next, uh, it's still quite high. There are other countries um, where it's much lower. Um, this is also a problem in the US where the, the high penetration of social media, so lots of use of social media combined with the distrust in the established um, media system has really led um, to the fake news um, um, problem and, and proliferation um, of fake news. So let's take a look at Germany. Also in, 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 in Germany, um, and this is um, coming now from our own data, this is from a survey um, we did right after the German election. And um, what we've seen here is that in Germany, uh, there is distrust in the media, but there's this particularly a group that has very high distrust uh, in media in Germany, and those are the AfD voters. AfD is the alternative for Germany. It's this new party, um, staunchly anti-immigrant, and that uh, had an upset uh, um, surprise success in the German election, getting more than 12% of the national vote, getting into parliament. And you will see that um, they have very high numbers among uh, AfD voters who um, distrust media, and they are also the group um, that is most likely to believe fake news and that is most active in sharing, uh, in sharing fake news. And we would therefore also argue that in Germany, fake news were... Um, mostly uh, used in the, in the context of the, um, um, of the election campaign as a political strategy to mobilize AfD voters. And um, you will probably ask yourselves what, and we are asking ourselves also about, you know, what, what should we do about it? Do we need uh, regulation? Um, what's the, the responsibilities, the ethical responsibility, uh, responsibilities of the social media companies? I will end with um, um, three things that are based from, uh, from our data that, um, that we can explore more in the discussion. Um, the red line uh, or the red um, um, uh, um, column um, shows you um, uh, the engagement um, with fake news. And the green one, this is a specific case I won't get into into Germany. The green one is the engagement of the debunking news. So news that corrected the story. And what, we've, what you find consistently as lots of uh, media entities now try to correct news, debunk fake news, is that um, the effect is not as big as um, the initial fake news stories. Fake news get much more attention and there's much more engagement with fake news on, on, on social media platforms. That's the first thing. Um, the, second, uh, the second thing is that a lot of fake news result from poor, what I would call poor journalism or poor press releases that are ambiguous and that are, then are turned into fake news. So here's another story that came up in the context of the German election campaign where there was an incident where bottles were thrown at the German police and the initial um, press release um, talked about a gathering of 1,000 young people and they were bottles were thrown at the police. Then a media report made, turned these 1,000 young people into 1,000 rioters uh, and um, then 
fake news stories appeared that were talking about 1,000 young migrant rioters that were throwing bottles um, at the police. And you can see um, that's what we see consistently is when there's ambiguous reporting, if there's, um, um, if there's a poor reporting on, uh, or a poor press release, um, that this is often taken advantage of to, to put a new spin on it and, and, um, uh, and use that uh, spin for a political purpose here, again, um, to uh, put blame against um, migrants. And finally, what we see, what really doesn't work that well, and our, our data shows this too, is the fabrication of news, if you completely make stuff up. And the most um, uh, effective way to stop that is if organizations immediately put out um, a counter um, narrative on social media. So if, for this was a fake news story that um, apparently a, a German um, minister in a, in a big German state had said the police should um, not talk about um, migrant um, um, criminality, that, that they should suppress this issue. And um, when this news appeared, immediately um, the, the, his, uh, his office put out a statement that, that he would never said that, that this is not true, that this is fake, and you see that his actually debunking story was very widely shared and let that the, the, the fake news story was completely ineffective. So it's also really important that we very quickly react um, when um, fake news stories um, come up. And I, I would like uh, to end it here. Uh, thank you for your attention.